This is at college. It's like Wired Magazine if it didn't have any editors. Today we'll tell you about how a group of students made an iPhone app, unofficial iPhone app, for their university. We'll show you how to gain access to all of the impossible locations on campus. And we'll give you a sneak peek into the unheard of life of college students that aren't drinking. All this and more on this week's Hack College. <laughs> Welcome to Hat College. I'm Chris. And I'm Kelly. And uh, yesterday was George Washington's birthday. What do you think of that, Kelly? I think that is very important. Okay, onward. Let's oppose our thumbs. This is Opposable Thumbs. We take three college news stories and give them thumbs up, thumbs to the side, or thumbs down, and then at each other for 60 <laughs> seconds or less. <laughs> Story number one. Calvin College student suspended for a derogatory Facebook message. Got this from the Grand Rapid Press, a little Michigan publication. I'll give it thumbs up. I'm saying thumbs down. Okay. Basically, the kid sent a derogatory message. It had like slang terms, referenced sexual activity to his ex-girlfriend. He claimed that she stole his password and framed him and sent this message and yeah. stuff like that. But actually, he got sent away for being at risk of like committing suicide or something like that. Yeah, and so I gotta kind of like justify my thumbs up here. It's mm -hmm. obviously not a good situation by any means, but yeah. I just think it's interesting that Facebook is actually being used as, or it's being treated kind of like professionally or seriously now. It's not just like, hey, check out my fun wall and look at this smiley face that I drew on it. See, I think it's kind of up because it's definitely leading to this whole thing where like everything you do is kind of like recorded yes. permanently in some way and can be held yeah. against you. We need to figure out some way of like creating some sort of division of privacy where, but but you shouldn't yeah. actually be able to do up stuff like that. But a, your school shouldn't suspend you, I don't think, in this case. But yeah. anyway, onward. Story number two. Georgia Tech students create unofficial iPhone app. This is originally from the Chronicle of Higher Education. Thumbs, thumbs up. up. Gotta go thumbs up for that. So huh? basically every school kind of has like a portal or some sort of thing where it's like, here are all the system logins for Blackboard and student accounts and all that stuff. So some students at Georgia Tech actually took it upon themselves and made an iPhone version of that. I think this is really cool. Yeah, that's really awesome. Um, what's not so awesome is that the IT people couldn't just man up and do it themselves. Yeah, well, I think given the how or given the caliber of most IT departments at schools, I'd say this is no, no surprise. surprise. Yeah. I mean, Ooh, sorry guys. But. Uh, uh, LMU has something called my LMU. While well, it was originally main gate, it's still not very functional, not very useful at all. I don't know why they keep revising this thing. It's like just giving my logins, like just a page with like, like student accounts, classes, just that's all I need. That's yeah. all I need. I mean, really is IT in charge of like syndicating different like news sources <laughs> and stuff now? Soon. Like, do we really need that anyway? This is Girls Gone Wild! <laughs> 8maps.com maps Prop 8 donors to their homes. I'm gonna go thumbs to the oh, this side is for thumbs down on for me. this one. So 8maps.com came online like a week and a half ago, okay? And it takes all the publicly available donor information and it took everyone who voted yes on Prop 8 and then put all of that info on top of a Google map so you can just see exactly where like the nearest Prop 8 donors are. Um, this is kind of scary, but I also think it's like a really interesting experiment in transparency, and I could definitely see this like being coming the norm in the future. Mm -hmm. But I just don't want people donating based on how like the public will perceive them, you know? And yeah. so I don't like that, that the information is becoming that public. I mean, well, I mean, the, the information has always been this public. Yeah. It's just now that someone actually took the information and organized it in kind of like a manner that makes sense so you can be like, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, well, a manner that makes sense for, like, hurting people. Yeah. You know, it's no, not, yeah, it's like, this is not conducive to, like, going over and shaking your neighbor's hand. I mean, exactly. it's, like, kind of for bad things. Yeah. Anyway, um, if you think uh, donating to Prop 8 is ostracizing, uh, then try going to a party sober. Well, Crazy. we're going to... Uh, Check in with a few students who have actually gone the entire month of February without drinking and see how they're doing. It's all about self-discipline and going against the status quo. It's a new segment we're calling The Test. My name is Chelsea Holman. I'm 19. I'm a sophomore accounting major. I'm Tyler Galbraith. I'm a junior accounting and business law major here at LMU. For the past month, I haven't consumed a drop of alcohol. I think it's a great way to try and test myself, to try and figure out if you can go a month in college without drinking alcohol, without giving in to the peer pressure. Um, for most of the time, I was just walking around with a water ball in my hand. So a water ball versus a red cup. But I never felt like 
people were looking at me completely differently because I wasn't drinking that night at that party. It's so fun when um, <laughs> people, not fun, okay, it's eye-opening to see people change under the influence. You'd not so much laugh at the people, but just enjoy them in their drunken state. Uh, it's not so much laughing at them, but you definitely get some sick pleasure from seeing the way that they act while drunk. When people pregame to go somewhere, that's what I found most awkward. The first weekend, it was one of my best friend's birthdays, and we were just sitting in her dorm room, and everyone's raging. They're like, the, for the sole, they congregated for the sole purpose of getting hammered. Um, yeah, I said it was a couple weekends ago that I did go out to a party off campus where most people are drinking. Uh, that one wasn't too bad for me because I just kind of told my friends that night that I would be DD for them, and so if they need to get around anywhere, uh, that made it a little bit easier to just explain. Whenever I'd have a hard day, um, I would crave it. Like, I just want to sit down and have a beer. <laughs> like, I'm just one of those beer girls, too. I don't know. Um, I just want to sit down and have a beer and just relax and take a load off, get my mind off, like, problems or I'm stressed or whatever. Um, I really didn't think it was going to be as difficult as it actually has become, um, just going out on weekends and stuff. Um, it's kind of just a nice little different feel to it, not having to, you know, drink every weekend or not feeling like obligated to drink to be able to fit in at parties and stuff. It's nice to judge both sides, like the extremes, like partying five times a week, which has happened before. I'm embarrassed, but it's like <laughs> interesting to note, or none. I'm not, I know which one's better. I know which one's better for me than none. But there's a happy medium in there and I think that um, everyone like needs to experience both to find it or just needs to understand both. Um, I definitely seem like I've been waking up earlier on the weekends, uh, not sleeping in till one o'clock on Saturday and Sunday mornings. And then just in general, um, I usually am not one to feel that bad the next morning, but just having a little bit more energy as you're going out on the weekends has been nice. I found that it wasn't really the drinking that de-stressed me. It was more of, it's the weekend and you have less responsibilities. But since it, it became so habitual that since freshman year, you know, oh, it's Friday. What are we doing tonight? Like, gotta know. And it's okay to be tired and want to sit at home, want to watch a movie, like it's, it's okay. Um, as I said, I would have told you before our game night a couple weekends ago, there's no way that you could have fun on a college Saturday night playing games all night um, and not drinking at all during those games. And yet we end up having a great time with that. And so it's not so much changing the definition of happiness, but changing the ways that you go about getting that happiness. The big thing that I take out of it is knowing that it's okay and that People are still going to be your friends. They're still going to have fun with you. They're still going to have fun with you. And I don't know if that's why people drink in the first place, but that's the complete wrong reason. I'm on a roof. This segment is only for the ballerist of ballers willing and daring enough to get onto a roof. Whether it's to impress a lady friend or just to throw a party, roofs are second only to boats. Alarm sounds like horn. Whoop whoop. First step, recon. Any Navy SEAL such as myself knows that reconnaissance is the first step to any successful mission. Depending on your state, you'll find signs like this around campus. These signs are like cheat codes to getting onto roofs of buildings. In the state of California, it's a law to have these signs in buildings. It's also a law that no one can be as awesome as me. Evacuation down. Party up. Step two, hack the door. For this step, you're going to need a toolkit. You're going to need a screwdriver, some foil, and some tape. You're going to need to examine the door. Take a look at the contacts. If you can unscrew the contact, tape the contact to the other one, then unscrew it then open the door. Sometimes you'll need a magnet. Just buy one and attach it to the alarm. <sighs> Step number three, don't trip, just do it. I usually like to call ahead and install a jacuzzi on the roof. What's up? 
And I always call my buddy with the helicopter. He drops off the Cristal and the DJ, who is always girl talk. Hack College is sponsored this week by Radar.net. Radar.net is a social network for your camera phone. Really, really cool here. They've been a longtime sponsor. We mm -hmm. love them. Uh, they've been up to quite a bit recently. They've got Twitter integration now. They've had a, an awesome Facebook app that they've had for a little while now. And a just brand new Radar iPhone app, which is awesome. Makes sharing pictures easier than ever. They're numbers. making basically it very easy to yeah to get your pictures online yeah. like instantaneously instead of like taking a bunch of pictures at a party with your group of friends and waiting yeah. two weeks for people to upload it to Facebook. It's more like what you're doing right now and it goes exactly. online like at this very moment and I take a picture of Kelly exactly. and how much of a dork he looks <laughs> like and then people know that I'm hanging out with Kelly basically. <laughs> so um, it's a really cool way to share and yeah. interact with like visuals instead of just little like Facebook statuses that are just text. And know? if you want to interact with us, my username is Kay Sutton. And mine is Lazinski and uh, you can just look us up. We've got little codes. My code is Hack College and you can just be my friend right away. Yeah. Just What's yours? Tail Tail623. So just Something request like me if you forget that. Okay. Um, so thanks to Radar.net for making Hack College this week possible. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for joining us. You can hit us up at hackcollege.com throughout the week for some posts on college hacking. And we'd also love it if you check out our Facebook page. You're checking it all day anyway. Why don't you keep updated to our page, which will keep you updated to our blog and our podcast and everything all at once. Just go to hackcollege.com slash Facebook. It's an easy way to get to the page. I'm Chris. And I'm Kelly. And until next week, don't pee in the showers. It's bad luck. That's so Sweetie, you know that kitchen sponge of yours? It has millions of tiny bacteria living in it. That's about as gross as when your father leaves the toilet seat up. <sighs> but you know, instead of throwing out your sponge every time it gets stinky, just sanitize it right there in your own kitchen. Just soak it under running water, then put it in the microwave for two minutes. Or you can leave it in some boiling water for about three minutes. That should do the trick. Love ya, schmoopies. Look out for that care package soon.